Hello and welcome back to my continued look at video editing on the brand new Synology DS1621XS Plus. This 10GBE Xeon base now, so we've done a whole host of testing on this device and today we're going to continue looking at video editing. Now, today we are going to be using uh, Premiere Element 2020 and we are going to be using video editing. We're going to be flicking between screens and as you can tell right now this is not my usual setup. For those that have watched the other videos you know what I'm going to say but if you haven't let me lead you through it. This is the DS1621XS Plus from Synology. We've got this device fully populated with 10TB WD Ultrastar drives, 10TB a pop each one of them 7200 RPM 256 meg cache in a RAID 6 environment using a BTRFS file system uh, volume on that storage pool with encryption enabled as well. So again, we have got four drives worth of capacity and we are using the 10 GBE port. We aren't using SSD caching for today's video and we're running that into a Sonic Thunderbolt 10G adapter which you can almost make on screen and I'm re-feeding that into my gaming rig here. That is my gaming laptop with Thunderbolt connected to the system. And what we're gonna be doing is editing a bunch of 1080p and 4K media files into a 4K output file. We're gonna run this test twice. The first test is going to be utilizing an internal NVMe on this laptop where we're gonna run the editing session. It's gonna make a five minute video that I'm gonna edit on screen for you here. Then we're going to run exactly the same test, but this time with all of the media on this 10 GBE NAS, with none of the media being on the internal NVMe. And yes, the embedded graphics and graphics card of this laptop will carry things forward, but ultimately what we want to know is if running all of that multimedia from this system over 10 GBE will be the same as if I was editing locally. That is, with the files on my NVMe instead. So what we're gonna do is make the switch to the laptop, but with the quick caveat that even though I've got the microphone here on the table, generally I don't like having the mic on the table in a video, I kind of have to because this system will get hot and the fans are gonna kick in, as will the drives inside this NAS in such close proximity. These are enterprise class drives that I wouldn't recommend normally working within a meter or two of. So I've got the mic in nice and close so you can hear me, but I do apologize in advance if there's some humming and whirring in the background throughout the course of this video. And I will have the laptop muted throughout the course of this test. So although you'll hear my voice, in theory, you shouldn't hear any of the background noise from any of the files during the course of the editing. But for now, let's make our way to the screen. So. As you can see here, already on screen, I have got Adobe um, or Adobe uh, Premiere Elements there. We're going to be using the video editor here. We're going to get that running in the background. And at the same time, uh, we've got our NAS already set up here. We can go into the control panel and have a look under the information center. And you can see this is a Xeon based NAS with 8 gig of memory and DSM 6.2. We're using the trial version of Elements. We're going to leave that in the background. And at the same time, we can make our way into the network management option and from there go into network interfaces and as you'll see we are connected via a single connection and this is a 10 gig connection. On my local PC here we can go into the network connections as well and you can see that solo 10G Thunderbolt 3 to 10G adapter there and if we go into the status you'll be able to look at the IP and as you can see 196.254 and there's the same IP there. Different subnet, but it doesn't make a difference. Uh, too much for this test, and it's a 10 gig connection. So we've got all that sorted out there. We've got all of those connections in place. And of course, the storage media, as mentioned, we are utilizing those six drives that are in that storage pool are in a RAID 6. Um, on the volume, we have got as a BTRFS volume, and we do have encryption, AES NI encryption enabled. So I'm just going to move the mic slightly there. So that is the NAS setup that we're running. And throughout the course of this video, we will have the resource monitor open. But it's worth highlighting the only thing we really care about here is the network. Because although the CPU and memory do play their part in this NAS, this is a Xeon DDR4 ECC memory NAS. So all of that's taken care of. But we are going to leave just on screen there the memory being utilized by this later on in the test when we have memory utilization. Also, 
we will have the task manager on screen as well and the ones we have to look at is firstly looking at Ethernet 3 that is our 10 gig connection and we want to take a little look occasionally at the GPU utilization and the memory the hope is that during the NAS portion of the testing that here will be listed at 0 or 1 percent and we do have screen recording software happening in the background which will read and write a little bit onto disk 1 so uh, we're not going to worry too much about the update there we're just going to go straight into combining uh, videos and clips into a single movie and again we're going to use uh, two different kinds of files for today's video and we're going to go straight into the NAS uh, sorry not the NAS we're going to use the local SSD inside here so we are not utilizing the NAS or 10 GBE for the first stage of testing this stage of testing is only I repeat only going to be on the PC as you can see this is the C drive here all of this is located on the C drive and if we right click go into properties actually make a lot more sense if we just go into system properties you'll be able to see we're using that i7 system there and if we go into the storage you'll be able to see that we are using uh, that internal NVMe but unfortunately it doesn't give you much information there I could go further just take my word for it we are using an NVMe inside our system so if we come out of it there uh, we'll add some files first thing so let's come out of that we'll add these three cat videos all of these are 4k recordings if we go into the details you can see they are 4k recordings they're recorded at 30 frames per second so we're going to add those three files have those lined up at the bottom as you can see this is the trial version so that big old banner is going to be on screen and then we will add more media and from there we are going to add some files here. Now it's worth highlighting, we're only going to look at H.264. These are 1080p and 4K files, but we're not going to be mucking around with the licensing of the H.265 and 10-bit HDR type stuff. All we want to look at is the H.264 based files, which apparently doesn't want to play the game and find for us. Let's go back there and find those files. So we want every single H.264 version. So there we go. And there we go. So then we want the 30-bit H.264. Then there's a 100-bit H.264. And finally, let's go for that. We're going to want one of the biggies at the top there. And there we go. Those are our H.264 files. One, two, three, four, five. We've got all of those selected correctly, haven't we? Yes, we have. All six of those. We get those those pieces of media added now to our editing lineup here. These are slightly uh, denser files. I think the largest one is around 100 meg. While it's adding that media, we're able to see there that the Ethernet is still not spiking. Everything's absolutely fine. So we've got our media there. So now we're going to add some very quick effects. We're going to go with the effects here and we're just going to go through them um, kind of as we find them. So we're going to put in black and white on the first one and grazy and blur on the second and so on and so forth. And again, I could fast forward this, but I just want to make sure you guys see that we are indeed applying a bunch of effects to these files. Got the system kind of catching up there. I might be moving a little bit too quick for the system that there easy does it and again I'm sure you guys are fast forwarding this part right now there we go we've added our effects we could add some transitions as well but I think those effects should be absolutely fine uh, and on there so we've added all of those different effects to all these different media files throughout um, so from here we can go ahead and click save so let's save this file and again we want this to be saved inside the same directory that we're playing with so in here we're just going to call this one my new video project local so we've got that done it saved a video project double check we've still got screen recording happening 
So for now, we're going to export and we're going to get ready to time this as well. So again, we want this to be um, high end. We're going for ultra 4K. So we're going for an ultra 4K video uh, recording. We're going to go for MP4. We want the recording quality to be pretty high. This is going to be a 4 gig file creation. So this is not going to be tremendously fast. Um, we're saving it. Um, let's go for the save directory. We are going to save that file once again inside exactly the same directory. So again, we'll call that local. Oh no, we're trying to go for a directory, aren't we? That was foolish. Save directly into there. Click save. And again, this is going to create quite a large file. But let's go ahead and create this file. We're going to leave that to do its thing. And we're going to get the start of the clock now. And we're going to leave this now to create our five and a, I think it's five and a half minute file. I think it's uh, just shy of six minutes, in fact. And we're going to see how long it takes the system to do this. Now, while it does that, we will leave on screen the uh, not that we'll leave on screen here. As you can see, there's been a slight spike there on Ethernet, but we are still talking kilobits per second. So that's not really anything to be concerned with. You can see now the SSD is now working as well. So you're going to see those spikes continuously on the SSD here. That's going to be where our primary focus is. And we are using the uh, embedded GPU on the CPU. We're not using the graphics card for this test. So that may uh, be a leveler of sorts between these two tests. But as you can see, we are accessing the internal NVMe SSD inside here, as you can see, it's the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. But uh, largely, the network is not being touched at all. And while it's doing that in the background, it's worth highlighting that, as you can see, there's the early testing there from uh, about 10 minutes ago, long before this video started. But over here, as you can see, there's been nothing. There's been kilobits of access. There's been no access there to the NAS. So what we're going to do now is fast forward to the completion of this exercise and then we're going to repeat everything we've just done but this time on the next step after this we are going to use the 10GBE NAS based media instead of local. Let's fast forward to the completion of this test. And the job is just drawing to a close. Uh, we're at 98%. And we're looking at it taking just shy of 20 minutes. We're at 17 minutes right now. Uh, we've seen a lot of the activity, of course, taking place there on the SSD, as we expected. The job has completed. Let's go ahead there. The job has compl been completed. I was a little slow on the uptake there, but it took around 17 minutes. Just over 17 minutes for that to be completed. And we've got that file, so we can go ahead and open the folder that it's in. We can scroll down. We can see that, in fact, it's 1.47 gigabytes. So the estimate there was pretty far off the mark, even though it estimated 4.26. If we go ahead and play that file, hopefully, hopefully this won't disrupt the um, screen recording too much. We've got all of these different transitions throughout the whole video. We weird fadey ones, we've got zoom out ones, we've got all of those different discolorations, we've got all of those different effects, that lightning one is dreadful. So we've got all of that done. So it took about 17 minutes, it didn't tax the system too much. So now what we want to do is repeat that entire process once again. So we're going to save that for now, in case we need to come back to it for a future video. It's going to come out of the program. We're going to let that finish. Quite a slow old program to exit from. We're going to reset the clock. So it was 17 minutes there. So again, we are going to now reopen video editor. But we're not going to be using the old project. We're going to go with a, a new project there. This time, we aren't going to be using uh, the local, as mentioned. We're going straight into that network drive. We're going to continue the trial. 
and from this network drive we're going to add those exact same files so we're going to go into video test edit once again we're going to take the three cat videos exactly the same three cat videos going to add those into the timeline as soon as it's added those we are now going to add the h264 files or six of them so we're going to go into there we're going to head back remember we're in that shared drive that's on the network it's that raid 6 over 10 gbe going to go in and again we're going to take each of the h264 files there will be um, six of them let's have a look there that's all six of the h264 files and again we've got the 4k all the way up to 200 meg unfortunately you have to do the download licensing to utilize hevc or h265 so we're just going to add those files there remember this is all being conducted over 10 gbe so this is where we're going to start seeing those mad spikes appearing here and we are going to see if it's possible to minimize this window unfortunately we can't so we are occasionally going to kind of flick between this and the um, Synology desktop but unfortunately we can't minimize this too much so we're just going to get that maximized there we've got the resource monitor from Synology there we'll put the task manager down there thank you very much for betraying me windows desktop let's have a look there we've got quite a stiff mouse mat there i do apologize for the clicking there while i'm working so again we'll get the fx editor open so we'll scroll along and once again we're just going to apply the same effects in that order along to each file so we're going to go ahead each time apply each effect just like before just going to repeat that same slow but steady process and you're going to see the spikes there in the background as we go of the 10 gbe being accessed responsiveness is largely the same hopefully none of this is um compromising the screen recording while i'm doing all of this get that edited on there next one on there next one on there and finally we've got the final fx being applied there so there's all of our effects all laid across each of those files i think i've doubled one up there got the same all of those files there all six of those editing files i'm going to go ahead and save a copy of this and again this time we are going to save in the shared drive so this is going to be my, my shared file 10 gbe or just 10 g going to go to export going to go to devices going to select the 4k option and again the one we want to look at remember is we want to look at ethernet during the course of this while casually glancing at the c drive and again we're ramping that up to the largest file size uh, we've got the 4k we've got that file size there we'll move that slightly higher up no we can't move it and we're going to click uh, browse going to make sure this saves into the main um, uh, mapped network drive over 10g going to select folder we're going to click save and boom let's start the party so let's get the timer on screen so again this time we are going to see a difference in performance the one that we want to focus on now is that ethernet connection you're going to start seeing some spikes here of file access as we see that that solo 10G connection is going to be maxed out. Um, we're going to see that connection ramping up throughout the course of this uh, test. And we can see there that the estimated time is a little shorter, but we will have to wait and see how accurate that's going to be. Now remember, even though we're connected over 10 gbe it is worth highlighting that it's not going to max out that 10g connection video editing is granular so accessing the main core files the main reason that 10 gbe is preferable to 1 gbe is because when you're interacting with the files live when you're scrolling through applying effects cutting chopping superimposing adding effects that's when 10g makes its mark but when it comes to the editing portion, as you see here, 10G isn't quite what you need. What you need is the frequency of those files. You need the Xeon inside this system. That's where that plays its part. And as you can see, 
the timer has jumped up a tiny little bit as it's dealing with some of the denser files. And while it's doing that, I do think it's worth talking a little bit about the files that we're using. So not the, I mean, they're all the same files anyway, but if we go into that shared drive, if we have a look at some of these uh, files, the H.264, these do ramp up. Some of them aren't that big. The largest files are approaching a gig. These files are all of, you know, growing uh, um, uh, density. We have got uh, three, I think maybe even four 1080p files and two 4K files, along with, as mentioned, the 4K videos of my cat. But what we're going to do now is we're going to fast forward to the completion of this stage of the testing to see the difference between the performance. Hopefully, what we're going to see is that um, Elements here is Elements 2020 in Premiere is going to match that of the local NVMe. You can see that the CPU is maxed at the top because we're not using the NVIDIA there. I wanted to remove that from the equation. Um, but our next video will feature the GPU access but now let's fast forward to the completion of this video Sorry about the break in recording there, as is Sod's Law, I got a phone call about two minutes before the end of the um, encoding of the 10GBE 4K output, and consequently I was on the phone for about 12 minutes and it ran, so I didn't see when it ended, but I have gone back through my recordings and can see that it took just over 18 minutes, so there was a difference of about 40 or 50 seconds between them. Now there's lots of things we can put that down to. It is quite a small margin of error, but still nevertheless it is worth highlighting that. Maybe it was because of the 10 GBE uh, being a little bit of extra work for the CPU, which was already at maximum, but still nevertheless, I do think this does show that 10 GBE on um, Elements 2020, uh, sorry, Adobe Elements 2020, can be usable over 10 GBE for editing 4K. Now, in our next test, we will be looking at an old favorite of mine, Power Director. It was the program I used when I first started editing video here on YouTube, and it's been kind of one of my fallback programs that I do utilize from time to time when all else fails. It's quite easy, it's quite user-friendly, although it does lack some of the flourish of some of these other programs. Um, I'll be doing our full uh, NVIDIA graphics card edit over 10 GPU using Power Director, so do check that out. But if you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you do want to learn more, click subscribe. And I hope you have found this video helpful. I will see you next time.